Mike and Anna from Australian Mountain Bike Magazine. Uh, we've been testing a lot of the 100% trail and all mountain gear recently, including the, the air matic and the ride camp clothing, but we'll take a look at the further details. So I've been riding the 100% air matic range, which has got a short sleeve jersey like this. There's shorts, gloves, but there's also a three quarter length jersey and full length trousers too. Um, the materials are a heather material. It's super stretchy and um, quite a close knit. It's super comfortable. It does have a, uh, a sunglass wipe on the inside, which is handy if on the on the sweaty or dirty days. And the shorts have a bit of a durable water repellency, um, which is great if it's just some, a bit of trail grime. Um, but it's also four way stretch, so you've got a lot of movement. The uh, buckle is a mountaineering buckle, like the downhill pants have. So I can't have big lunch. I've only got one hole left to go. Also got pockets whether you want to put um, your keys or your phone in there uh, and a smaller one down the side too just to keep your lift pass or something handy. Along with the gloves, it's a nice trail riding kit. The gloves do have protection on the back. It's a dual layer palm and with silicon grippers on, on the fingers and uh, smart stitching so you can still use your phone uh, if you need to take a call when on the trail. The Airmatic range is really well priced too. The jersey's 70 bucks, shorts are 130, Gloves are 50 bucks for a really nicely fitting set of gloves. G'day, today we're talking about the women's ride camp kit. And today I am wearing the women's ride camp kit, which retails at about $60 in the powder blue and gray colorway. Also got some uh, of their ride camp shorts. So the ride camp shorts are quite a nice essential. I think everyone should have a nice pair of riding shorts. Um, they feature a couple of pockets with zips. We've also got a little buckle for closure with some adjustability in that as well. It features a two-way stretch, so it's nice and comfortable to move in without being overly technical. It's a really good essential sort of shorts. These guys are 106. The Ride Cam jersey is ultra light, perfect for the Australian summer and keeping nice and cool. It features, like the rest of the 100% range, a really handy goggle or glasses wipe, which I love, um, as well as a nice high necked fit. The Ride Camp shirt also features a drop tail fit, so it looks really good when you're bent over and like attacking the trails and being super rad as you all are. Um, so that's the Ride Camp kit for the women today. So this is the Ride Camp clothing, just like Anna had, but in the men's version. There is a short sleeve jersey, 60 bucks, and, or you can get the long sleeve version as well. Same price, 60 bucks. It's a slightly more basic, just polyester mesh um, material compared to what the Airmatic kit's made out of. It's still super comfortable, probably won't be as hard wearing in the long run, but I, I really like it. It's a nice airy fit, which is great in Queensland. The shorts are a bit over 100 at $106, two-way stretch, so there's still plenty of movement. Um, just as comfortable, I think the, uh, the Airmatic shorts do fit uh, and stay, stay put a little bit better. Still got some pockets, hand pockets in the side, down on the leg as well, and just more of a, a stretch fly with press studs at the top. The Airmatic gloves uh, were obviously a bit more reinforced. These have just got a single layer palm, stretch back, still got mesh between the fingers, and they're still smartphone compatible with the silicon grippers. So a really nice slip-on glove that's easy to get along with. So we're back, we're looking at the Celium line. So the Celium line is 100% premium all mountain trail wear. Uh, typically, you'll see a short sleeve jersey, shorts and gloves. The gloves come in at $40 with the shorts being $190 and the jersey $100. That may seem a little expensive, but what you're getting here, you're paying a premium price for a premium product. So the jersey is super lightweight, really comfortable, has the drop tail as we see on a lot of the line, and a goggle wipe, which is a great feature. The shorts, we've got two zip-up pockets, one on the left, one on the right. Super lightweight, single layer material, really stretchy with some ventilation holes. These have become my go-to summer riding shorts. They're epic, I love them. One of the best features, or in my mind the best feature, is the BOA closure system. You don't see this very much in mountain biking gear, and this is just another part of what makes these shorts my favorite in the line. And finally, the gloves. We've got single layer material on the top and on the bottom with the smart stitch so you can still use your phone. Obviously gloves, very personal thing, but to me, these fit great, feel great. I forget I'm wearing them when I'm on the bike. Two thumbs up. Hi guys, now we're discussing the women's Airmatic range. 
Today, I'm wearing the Seafoam Green and Checkers top, which retails at $70, and the Seafoam Green Airmatic shorts, which retail at $130. These guys are a little bit different to the Ride Camp range. The jersey is made out of a soft heather material, which goes really nicely from on the bike to off the bike, maybe at the pub having a beer. It's really quite versatile like that. The neckline is a little bit different. It's a V-neck um, and it's soft and light and quite a slim th fit through the torso. Like the rest of the range, it does feature the drop tail in the rear and the goggle or glasses white, which I love. The shorts, similar to the men's, feature the mountaineering buckle closure with a few different levels of adjustment there for different sizes. You know, if you go and have a big palmer at the pub, you might need to like open it up a bit. I don't know. These guys also, if one is good, more is better. And so they've added in extra zips. So this guy's a little one, good for a, a key. And this one's, you know, good for phone or other P and A. They are quite a slim fit, uh, which is really nice. You feel really quite fast, but make sure you get the sizing right on these ones. They do feature also a ventilated mesh pocket here as well. That's it for the Airmatic women's range. We're uh, playing with a whole lot of 100% gear at the moment. And one of the really nice pieces is the 100% Altus helmet. It's actually really good value selling for about 190 bucks, um, but, been enjoying it because of not just the fit but the the features that are on it as well it's well vented um, which is means you've got it's not like a road helmet there's vents coming in but also exhaust port that's not relying on high speed airflow it, it works works really well even when you're just cruising along um, it comes in three helmet sizes which is handy if you're getting the right fit um, plus the retention system at the back it doesn't have mips what 100% uh, use instead is their smart shock uh, rotational slip device. So basically it's all these blue dots in here is where the liner, which is washable, um, can slip around on the inside of the helmet, which reduces the impact if you do crash. So the Altus is also goggle friendly. You can lift the visor up to the highest of the three positions and uh, hit the trail or go full goon. Some feedbacks come back with this helmet is that it could have a little bit more coverage down the sides of the head. So if you're looking for a real hard hitting trail helmet, it might not be for you, but for general trail use, uh, we've all really been enjoying this one. Now we're gonna discuss the protective 100% range with the surpassed knee guards and the elbow guards here. Now these guys are the top level, level two of protection, and they feature some rubberized outer, some bent structure, so you're in the attack position and comfortable. On the elbow guards, these are really easy to put on and off. They've got elasticized cinching they've also got the rubberized outer got a really nice nice fit and it's super easy to get ready to shred these guys also feature strategically placed perimeter embossed foam padding with ventilation they also have an internal elastic flex joint if you're after some protection for some heavy hitting downhills, some gravity, days of shuttles, or just some real next level protection, I definitely go for the Surpass. It exceeds all the other ones in terms of protection and still comfortable to wear. So up next, we're looking at the trail slash enduro elbow pads and knee guards. I've got the TerraTech Plus and Mike's got the Ride Camp. So the TerraTech Plus elbow guards and knee guards we're at $150 for the knee guards and $130 for the elbow guards. Now these pads are slip-on with elastic on the inside. We've got SmartShock certified elbow and knee padding. A little bit more padding than you'd expect from a lightweight trail pad. So these pads have something unique. They've got a pre-curved chassis with inbuilt hinging. So as you can see here, as I move, these are designed to bend as you're riding. And honestly, one of the most comfortable set of pads I've ever worn. So the knee guards, as you can see, come up quite high. Uh, this is also padded on the thigh and we've got lateral knee protection as well as a knee cup and they come down the shin. So a great level of protection for all day enduro or trail riding. So on the inside of the pads, on the top of the cuff for both the elbow pad and knee guard, we've got silicone grippers. These, once they get sweaty, really activate and help to make sure that your pads aren't gonna slip off when you do eventually crash. I've been using the Ride Camp elbow guards and knee guards. 
they're the most entry level um, set of padding from 100%. Um, they're $89 for the elbows and 105 for the knees. These ones are probably what you want to be using if you just might slip off and need some abrasion resistance. They, they are padded, but they're nothing like the other ones that Anna and Hayden have been using. So if you want something that's light and really comfortable to ride all day, then these are the ones to look at. They uh, slip on with an elastic gripper at the top, quite breathable um, on the inside of the arm or the back of the leg. Um, but while there is reinforced material on the outside and there is padding, it's no, there's no hard shell padding there and there's no extra real articulation. So if you want something that's just gonna be there for some, some protection from hitting the ground, this is, this is what to look at. But if you know you're gonna be hitting the ground, I'd probably look at something a little bit more full on. So this is the aircraft composite full face helmet. So this one comes in at $500. It's direct competition for the Fiberlight D3. Uh, 25 vents, uh, a really nice big goggle port designed specifically to fit 100% goggles. So it's really comfortable. Uh, we've got quick exit cheek pads here and overall a great look. Goggle port on this helmet, really big. Designed specifically for 100% goggles. So you can fit a large outrigger style goggle within this helmet, which can't be said for a lot of the competition. Uh, it stops the goggles from pressing down on your face, which is a great feature. So one worth keeping in mind. One thing that's worth mentioning with this helmet is it comes in at around 1100 grams, which for a fiberglass helmet is actually quite light. It's lighter than most of the competition. So if you're out there doing a long day shuttling or on the enduro bike, less chance to get a sore neck. So that's something definitely worth keeping in mind for this helmet. So the helmet itself comes in three different shell sizes. Uh, it's got removable cheek pads and an entirely removable liner, so you can keep it clean after you've been out riding. So up next, we've got the R-Core Concept Downhill Jersey Combo. Uh, this combines a lightweight spandex under jersey with a super lightweight uh, sleeveless bib over the top, something we've not seen in mountain biking before and a really cool development in my mind. Keep in mind that this also would just make a great winter under jersey for any kind of trail riding. So you can pop this under a long sleeve jersey or a short sleeve jersey. So because of the spandex under jersey with no actual baggy sleeves, this is the most lightweight long sleeve jersey I've ever worn. Uh, it wouldn't be great in the event of a crash. It's gonna rip quite easily, but in terms of lightweight performance, particularly in summer when you have to wear long sleeves, this is the best I've ever seen. And of course, as is seen with all of the 100% kit, Goggle wipe integrated into the bib. Always a great feature for when you get some stuff on your lenses or you need to wipe your brow or anything like that. Up next, we've got the Arcor Downhill Pants. These are your go-to pant for any time you're doing shuttles or any big enduro days. Uh, a tough polyester construction, but they've still integrated some good knee flexibility in there. Zip up pocket and a mountaineering style buckle. Uh, a great pant for a day out on the big bike. These pants come in at $180, which is a great price point for a downhill pant, cheaper than a lot of the competition. Uh, and from my experience, really durable. I've spent a few weeks riding with these in Tasmania, hosing them down every day and I didn't see anywhere. So these pants, uh, definitely a downhill race pant, not your all day trail pant. They do get a little warm, but that being said, uh, a lot of protection. The polyester material is really hard wearing. The Racecraft goggle. Coming in at $120, this is 100% probably most popular product. Uh, this is what they named, made their name off. This goggle with the outriggers, hugely popular. You'll see this at any bike park you go to, anytime there's gravity riding going down, you'll likely see people wearing this goggle. In the packet, it includes a tinted lens, a clear lens, and a set of tear-offs, and a nose guard. A lot of people say the nose guard isn't of any use, but on wet weather days, or if you're following your buddies in some mud, it's actually great to protect the front of your nose and help keep it warm. We've got a triple layer face foam to help wick away any moisture and a 45 millimeter wide goggle strap with silicone on the inside. Just make sure you got it in the right spot so you don't have goon strap with all your buddies. So let's talk glasses. This is where 100% made their name. So we've had on test the Hypercraft, the Speedcraft, and the S3. All of the 100% Sunnies come with a really nice storage box and a clear lens that's really easy to swap out. They also come with a replacement nose bridge, just in case you lose it. All of the sunglasses include a tinted lens, which is 100% UV protection, so to keep your eyes safe while you're out on the bike. Typical of the 100% sunglasses range are these little vents at the bottom. They may just look aesthetic, but they actually help to port air through behind your glasses as you're riding to stop them from fogging up.
So the S3 is kind of the middle of the road for the 100% glasses line. In terms of look, they're not as aggressive as the Speedcraft, but they're not as soft as the S2. They're kind of that nice middle, not too aggro looking, but still a nice edgy design. We've got a really wide field of view. As you can see, the top bridge here comes up so that when you're leant over and looking up, you still can't see the top of the sunnies, which is a great feature for us. Also, as you can see, due to the size of the lens, there's great protection from dust and from anything that might be hitting your eyes as you're out on the bike. Hi guys, today we're talking about the 100% Hypercraft and these ones are the matte metallic model with the blue topaz mirror lens. I'm loving these glasses and these are the perfect glasses for those weight weenies that cannot compromise one gram. These glasses weigh 23 grams. They are hydrophobic and oleophobic, which means they repel water and oil and they have a really good full coverage so you're not worried about seeing lenses in the corner of your eyes instead of those rocks or sticks that you're riding over. These guys retail at $2.59 and they come like the other glasses with some interchangeable lenses and adjustable nose piece to customize your fit. With these ones, they are also vented lenses so you find that you don't find them fogging up in hot or humid conditions and it's easy enough just to adjust them up or down your nose but they have a really firm and secure fit so initially I was a bit concerned when I pulled them out of the box that they were going to be too big for my face. But in the end, they ended up being awesome. They offered full coverage. Um, they're very UV safe. And I personally don't think that they look ridiculously big. I quite like them. So these are big thumbs up for the Hypercraft. So I've been using the 100% Speedcraft sunglasses. All the same tech as the S3 that Hayden's been using, but they're just a tiny bit smaller. So if you don't have such a, a big noggin, you might find that these fit your, fit your face better. Again, a lot of similar features, so quite high at the top of the frame, so even if you're getting down into a speed tuck, you're still looking through and not seeing the frame. You got the ports, so they're not gonna fog up. If you're really going slow and it's hot and there's a, um, a lot of humidity, you can still slide them down your nose to get them clearing. I found the, the lens to be super crisp and because it wraps around so far to the side, if you're taking a glance over your shoulder, if you're riding to the trails on the road, you don't have much of a blind spot there, which is really good. This hyper lens is um, around 79% light transmission, whereas it does come with a clear lens too, which um, is 93% light transmission. So if you're riding at night or you want your eyewear for commuting as well, it's all good. I found them to be super stable, which is, um, in part due to the, the rubber grippers on the nose and on the ears, and they haven't budged. Basically, I haven't thought about them when I'm riding, which is, which is what you want. Same price, 279 with a case, the spare lens, and, and, a, um, and a cloth to look after them. With an impact-resistant lens and a shatterproof frame, it's exactly where you should be looking for high-performance eyewear that, that are gonna look after your eyes. Okay, so here in Southeast Queensland, the need for waterproof clothing in winter is pretty minimal, but if you're anywhere that it gets wet or if you're doing park laps, having a nice waterproof jacket is essential. This is the 100% hydromatic jacket. There's also a Parker. This one's 270, the Parker's 250. It's got a hood that fits over, fits over the helmet like so and past your mic um, and back off again too. Packs out of the way nicely. It's got pockets on the chest and you've also got a nice Cord just to tighten it up at the sides. Um, the material is where it's at though. It is 100% seam sealed, which means rain doesn't get forced in through the seams. It's also got a, a 10, 10K um, hydrostatic head, which is the amount of water pressure that it can take. Being a two and a half layer material means there's an outer layer over the waterproof membrane with a really light protective layer for the membrane inside. It's still quite breathable as well, rated again at 10,000 um, millimetres per hour of, uh, of moisture transfer. There are some vents uh, underneath the shoulders as well that also aid that. In terms of durability, it does have Cordura sleeves just on the, on the front of the arm. So if you are either crashing or, or moving through branches and shrubs, it's not going to tear up, which is, which is what you want from, from this kind of item. Now the shorts are the same thing. So same material, um, it's got a boa dial to get them done up. Uh, you do have some zip pockets. They're a fairly uh, narrow leg cut, so they're not gonna flap in the wind. Uh, and with Cordura on the base, because if it's wet, you're gonna get mud piling up on your seat and that otherwise is gonna be the first place to go. You can get trousers as well, which I think is probably um, the wise choice if you are looking for some waterproof clothing to do park runs or in an alpine area, you might as well go full coverage. And they're about 280 bucks. 
all in, it's a really well-fitting uh, setup of waterproof clothing. Might seem like an investment first up, but this stuff is built to last. And I reckon if you hang, have it in your wardrobe, you'll have it there for a few seasons to come. So the 100% hydromatic jacket, it is 100% waterproof with a 10,000 uh, millimeter hydrostatic head. Now you can really seal it up, so I can get it sealed up at the cuffs, nice and, nice and tight, get it zipped up, and get the hood nice and tight to really, really see how waterproof it is. Ugh. take a look not a mark on the gray mile so there you go so here we have the corridor stretch windbreaker this one comes in at $140 so it's a good entry-level windbreaker for someone out there this is a super lightweight jacket perfect to have smashed in the bottom of your backpack for whenever you think you might need it uh, great if you're going out and doing a shuttle day riding a chairlift and you think it might be a bit chilly at the top this jacket is wind resistant and water resistant, but it's not fully water resistant. So it's just got a coating over the top. It's got two zip up pockets, enough room for your phone. And it's also got a lens wipe. We've also got a nice drop tail with some vents at the back to help keep you cool. So the material on this one is a mechanical stretch woven ripstop. It's also got some nice reflective pieces here so that if you get some light from the headlights, if you're out on the road bike or something like that, you're gonna be seen. Uh, really nice and stretchy, light and comfortable, but still enough to break the wind and help keep off a little bit of water. But we're gonna test that in a second. So the Corridor Stretch Windbreaker, as it says on the tin, this is a windbreaker, but it does have a water resistant coating. Let's give it a run. <laughs> um, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty wet. <laughs> Moister than an oyster, probably keep this one at home if it's actually raining.